Well, how do you two? Monkey Joe here, Unky Joe's Playhouse. How is everyone doing? I hope you're doing well. I'm doing okay. I've had a rough weekend, but uh, I hopefully I'm feeling better. I've got some sort of respiratory issue going on, but that's my problem, not yours. As you can see behind us, uh, there have been some small changes to our set. In fact, if you look over here to my left, you'll see I've got a table set up. We're playing around with maybe creating some new uh, set backdrops and that kind of thing. And then my uh, my special other person got me that uh, artwork. I actually got it for me three or four months ago. I just now got around to hanging it on the wall. Uh, and we're going to do some changes with the set design behind us. But that's not what this video is about today. This video is about a swimming pool and the saga of my swimming pool. So uh, if uh, home improvement videos are not your type of thing, you can click away now. But please give us a thumbs up if you decide to do that. So you're, you're probably figuring, Joe, you know, why do you need a pool? Why do you want to go to all that trouble? Well, there's a reason for it. One, it's pretty much the only exercise I get besides, you know, work and going outside and working in the yard. Um, and it works all the muscle groups on my body. I've, I've got diabetes. I've got some other health problems. So it's very important I get regular physical exercise to keep my body, you know, from dying, basically. Now, my brother last year bought a uh, in-ground pool. He waited many, many years for it. It's a wonderful pool. It's a saltwater pool. Uh, he's got a beautiful house in a beautiful neighborhood, and it's about 30 minutes away. And he said, anytime you all want to go swimming, you just come on over, uh, whether I'm home or not, and use my pool. Well, that's all fine and dandy, but... You gotta load up the car, you gotta do this, you gotta do that, you gotta drive. And while I appreciate it very much, <clears throat> there's nothing, nothing like having a pool in your own home. And it's not like we set up a pool and we don't ever use it. You know, a lot of people buy pools and for their kids and then the new wears off, as they say, and nobody ever uses the pool again. We use the pool every day during the summer. Um, and if it's warm enough during the spring, we use it. So... We've gone ahead and uh, pull, pulled the, uh, what's the saying? Pulled, pulled the trigger? Yeah. And we pulled the trigger and we bought an above ground pool. Now, a, a regular uh, metal, metal sided above ground pool, because it's what we could afford. So it's a 24 foot by 52 inch deep pool. The only problem is, is <laughs> they won't be able to install it till August the 14th, which is toward the end of the swimming season. But that's okay, because all good things come to those who wait, right? And if they have a cancellation, they'll do it a little a little bit earlier. Now, this is a substantial step up from a soft-sided pool for us. So we'll be putting a deck around it, those kind of things. But in the meantime, I wanted to show you why I'm having to take down my Intex pool so that you can be aware of it if you ever decide to buy one for your family. Again, these are designed to be temporary pools, not set up for a long period of time. Some people get four or five years out of these pools. Others get a year out of them. It just depends on, on your current, uh, you know, your current situation. So, uh, let's go uh, look at that video right now. We've got the uh, liner down. I mean, we got the base for the pool down. We got the top rail in where it needs to be. And what we're getting ready to do is we're gonna let the liner. We got it out of the box, it's heating up here in the sun, in the good old South Texas sun. We'll give it about an hour or so to warm up, makes it easier to put together, but here's the liner. And then we'll start threading the, uh, we'll start threading the liner through the top rail assembly. Pool is filling. Getting the wrinkles out. We're gonna wait till it gets up to this seam right down here. Once it gets up to that seam, we're gonna go around and we're gonna check it for level between each post. And we're gonna put bricks underneath where we need to, get them as level as we can. The pool needs to be within an inch of level all the way around. And then we'll start filling it some more. There it is. She's filled with water. You can tell she's a little bit out of level. This is the low side over here. Very little out of level. An inch or less. Water is 
nice and clear. Little Intex skimmer in there, that's temporary. Water's nice and clear. I manned about four cups of bleach a day. That's about right for a 5,000 gallon pool. That's what this is. It took us about two days to fill it up. But you can see the water's crystal clear all the way to the bottom, and I gotta get some junk off the bottom. Now, fortunately, I've been through this before and thought ahead, so what I'm doing here is hooking up a submersible pump to drain the remainder of the water out of that pool. It's about half full. The drain plug is actually facing the house uh, because that's where the returns for the uh, pool were. If I'd have been thinking, I would have made that drain plug face the fence, but it just didn't work out that way. So I put a submersible pump in there and let it run for a few hours and it gets probably 98% of the water out of there. And then what I'll do is end up cutting a hole in the liner, the bottom of the liner where my dog is standing. And then that should drain the remainder of the water out of the pool. So the first thing is to get this thing empty and then we can start uh, deconstructing it. So here we are about a day later and I'm pulling the pump out, it's drained most of the water. You're not going to see it, but like I said, I'm going to slice a, uh, I'm going to cut a hole in the liner on the side where I'm standing so it can finish draining the uh, rest of the water out of the pool. Now I went ahead and I did a few other modifications to this pool. One is I put a skimmer on it, a regular skimmer, and then I hard plumbed uh, the, the inlets and uh, everything but the outlet. So now I need to go disconnect those because I want to save those old pipes. They're quite expensive. If you've ever bought one of those uh, couplers or unions, they're about 10, 15 bucks a piece. So I want to save as many of those as I can. Hopefully use it on the new pool when it gets here. So now begins the disassembly process of getting all the pipes disconnected. And uh, I'll save those. I'm going to save the old sand filter and the old pump and I'll probably put it out on the curb for somebody to just take. Um, usually that's what I do when I have old stuff I don't need anymore. Um, it's easier than putting it on Craigslist or eBay and it disappears a lot quicker as well. So uh, yeah, fun, fun, fun. Uh, it's kind of sad to see this pool go. Um, we, we put it in the front yard for a reason because there's a shade tree there and and you know we always want to try to be the white trashiest neighbors in the neighborhood so what better way than to be white trash than to put a pool in your front yard and uh, it worked you could wave at the neighbors while you're floating around you know having a beer or whatever I, we just thought it was kind of humorous to put it in the front yard uh, so I'm gonna miss that pool being in the front yard because after about five six o'clock at night the Sun is on the other side of the house <clears throat> and it just makes for a really enjoyable kind of swimming experience where we're going to be putting the new pool which I'll show you in another video in a, a, when we get to that point is on the west side of the house so uh, we're going to be facing the sun all <laughs> all during the evening where this new pool is going to go and uh, we don't have really any shade trees over there uh, we're going to rectify that we're going to remedy that as well we're going to plant a whole bunch of uh, trees to shade uh, that pool, uh, but we're going to do it correctly. We're going to keep them as far from the pool as we can. But when that sun is up in the, at, the, at the top of the sky at about 4 or 5 at night, you're not going to get any relief from the sun at all. You're just going to strictly be baking uh, even though you're in the water. So uh, we'll figure something out. Maybe we'll put some umbrellas out or something. But uh, I gotta tell you, I am gonna miss having this pool in the front yard. It was kind of fun just being able to drop right out the front door and, and go throw a floaty in and, you know, enjoy the afternoon.
And then here we are the next day. As you can see, the water has been drained out of the pool and the wind is starting to catch it. We get pretty good winds out here, so it becomes like a huge uh, sail. <clears throat> so uh, today was the day when we actually started disassembling it and dropping it to the ground so that it wouldn't, you know, God forbid, blow into our neighbor's yard. And uh, you got to be careful with the winds out here. Uh, you know, if you grab a hold of it at the wrong time, you go flying into the neighbor's yard. But uh, it's simply a process. These poles just simply kind of snap in. They have a snap release mechanism. And then uh, you just disconnect them from the, uh, from the little, uh, what do they call that? The little uh, bottom part. There's a strap that goes around the bottom of the pool to keep the uh, legs from kicking out of the bottom. <clears throat> and then my spouse was here helping me do it a couple legs at a time. So you just follow the pool around, do it two or three legs at a time. Just take your time and eventually the thing will drop to the ground and then you can, uh, what I would recommend doing is slicing it, just taking a uh, X-Acto knife or a, a razor blade and slicing the vinyl up into manageable pieces. Uh, and then you can use that vinyl for lots of projects around the house. You don't need to put it into a landfill. You could use it to uh, cover up and prepare garden beds and that kind of thing. You could use it. It makes really good weed block. Uh, nothing pretty much other than nut grass will try to come through this uh, vinyl liner. So, uh, you know, you got $300, two or $300 worth of vinyl there. Don't just throw it into a landfill. Uh, wrap, roll it up, put it someplace, and you can use it, like I say, for weed block or whatever. But, uh, you know, the process, like I said, is trivial. And um, we're going to look at those legs that we took off so I can show you what I was talking about as far as the rust goes but uh, for now we'll just uh, we'll get the pool knocked down
and I took some shots of the top rail. These are the metal rails on the top of the pool, and you can see the rust has started. And you know, this is not typical for an Intex pool. My other pools didn't rust out. Uh, I developed problems with liners or whatnot, but I've never had an Intex pool rust out like this so quickly. Um, and you can see there, that's one of the support legs, and it just rusted clean through. Um, and you know, this is the, gives you an idea of what's left. Same way with that one, it just rusted completely through. And um, uh, there's the bottom leg that sits on the ground. Now, if Intex had done a better job of treating the metal uh, with, and chose a better grade of paint, I don't believe we would have had this problem. But this is the main reason we had to take this pool down is because the metal legs had just simply rotted out. So you can easily see why we were forced to take the pool down. The plan was to open it up uh, at the beginning of the year and just use it until we got the new pool installed in the backyard, but it just wasn't feasible. That pool was unstable. I didn't want to risk injuring anybody. So down it comes. What we're going to do with that location is we're going to clear it and we're probably going to put a little gazebo or patio area up there. We haven't really decided yet, but uh, there you go. Um, the, be aware when you use these cheaper Intex and Best Way and Coleman pools, you have to be very careful and keep a close eye on these uh, these support members when they start to develop rust. Uh, it, do, it doesn't take long for them to rust through. It took my pool less than six months to rust through, and for those for those pool supports to uh, rust out and be become you know unreliable and actually dangerous. So uh, the the pool is down now, as you saw, and uh, we'll, we'll just be waiting for them to install the new one in the backyard. Can't, can't wait for that, huh? So there you go, YouTube. We hope you found the video entertaining and informative. As always, please come back and see us again. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up down below. Leave your comments down in the comments section. Donate if you're so inclined. Take PayPal, take Patreon. And uh, I want you to know I appreciate each and every one of my subscribers and even those who don't subscribe i appreciate you guys too so thanks again for coming to see us again and don't forget we'll see you on the other side